Environmental considerations can be a huge question mark during a real estate development project. Everything from tree and habitat monitoring to endangered species coordination to stream and wetland delineations and permitting. And the presence of one or several of these conditions often leads to additional required cash outlays, time delays, and can even kill an entire project. So it's important to understand what to look for as part of your site selection and land acquisition strategy to avoid surprises during land entitlement. But it's even more important to understand who to leverage and how to navigate those challenges if they do arise during a project. Because too often, developers, investors, and small business owners are uninformed about the potential pitfalls and associated land entitlement risks. So keep watching as I dive into how to handle streams and wetlands when it comes to your real estate development project. What's up everyone? It's Matt Marsh, founder of Martian Partners. Martian Partners is a development and national consulting firm that helps business owners and investors maximize their real estate and transform their businesses. Now, if you're enjoying what we're doing here and wanna keep seeing more content like this, please hit that like button, share this video and our other videos with people you think might find some value in them. Before you buy a property for development, it's important you conduct adequate real estate due diligence on the site to make sure it's a feasible project. You wanna investigate things like access to utilities, a site's topography, and its zoning. But to determine how much of a site is actually buildable, you'll need to take it one step further. And that's to understand the surface and subsurface conditions that impact what and how much can be built. One of the other major factors that impacts how much can be built on a site is whether or not there are streams or wetlands present. Now, since the early 1970s, the federal government has placed an emphasis on preserving and replenishing U.S. wetlands, many of which have disappeared since the American settlement. And in order to enforce these regulations, the government has really placed the onus on real estate developers to thoroughly investigate any potential impacts before pursuing a project. But as a developer, how exactly do you go about doing that? First, a preliminary assessment will determine whether jurisdictional streams or wetlands may be present on site. This determination usually includes some component of a desktop review and a site visit to determine potential presence. The next step would be a comprehensive stream and wetland delineation. Now, these are formal field investigations based on the standards outlined by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in their 1987 Wetland Delineation Manual. A qualified environmental consultant will investigate the site for specific types of vegetation, hydric soils, and wetland hydrology that may indicate a potentially jurisdictional stream or wetland. Areas would then be marked and staked for verification and surveying purposes. Now, once the wetland and stream delineation is complete, the Corps of Engineers and any applicable state environmental agencies will need to visit the site and confirm any jurisdictional features on the property. The on-site verification will serve to formally classify the extent of jurisdictional streams or wetlands on the site. The federal government holds the builder or developer responsible for anything that adversely impacts the environment as a result of a project. The EPA's sections 404 and 401 outlines a series of enforcement actions against entities that conduct unauthorized activities as part of a project. Now, if the property doesn't have any wetlands on the site, or if your proposed project doesn't impact any existing wetlands, then you really have nothing to worry about. But if your project in any way adversely impacts wetlands on the site, then you'll be required to get a permit. And if you, as the developer, don't get a permit, you'll be required to pay monetary penalties for violating wetlands regulations. Now, it's also common that developers may be required to mitigate and restore on-site wetlands if feasible, or off-site wetlands to make up for any loss of wetlands as a result of development. Now, if any stream impacts are proposed as part of a project, the approval process is similar to that of wetland permitting. In many cases, streams have buffer requirements which state that development cannot encroach within a certain linear distance of the stream. So even if a development isn't physically impacting the stream itself, if it's impacting the stream buffer, permits would still be required before construction can commence. But ultimately, the critical point is that before you develop a site, you should consult with an environmental consultant as part of the real estate due diligence process to determine if there are any streams or wetlands present on the site. If in fact there are, it's critical to, to conduct a stream and wetland delineation and to properly navigate the permitting process 
to ensure your project is in compliance with the EPA's guidelines. Now, one of the most important things to remember is that it's critical to properly sequence your real estate due diligence activities on the front end of a project. Many issues that pop up during due diligence are things that can actually be overcome, but if they're not uncovered early in the process, or if some of your tasks are done out of order, it can lead to big project delays and additional costs. A stream of wetland delineation is something you'll want to do early in the process because the outcome will result in a series of compounding implications that can actually impact the project's profitability. Thing, things like buildable area, density, site design, etc. And we have a comprehensive real estate due diligence checklist that we've compiled that will help you make more thoughtful, calculated, and meaningful decisions during the land acquisition and site selection processes. It's built from the lessons of our past missteps and failures, so you don't have to make the same costly mistakes that we have. Check out the video description for a link to download that checklist, or you can book some time directly on my calendar if you're currently investigating a property and need some help, or if you're considering pursuing a project and aren't quite sure where to start. Our real estate consulting services are designed to help small business owners, investors, and developers navigate the land entitlement and real estate development processes. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on content to help you through your real estate investing and development journeys. You can also check out our website for more real estate insights at marsh-partners.com. Feel free, leave me a comment if there are any other topics you're interested in or you'd like me to cover specifically. And again, don't forget to subscribe if you want more content like this, and thanks for watching.